looks at Hollywood. Today's guest is one of MGM's great finds, a distinguished actress, Miss Ruta Lee. Also with her, he received an Emmy for his performance as Buzz in Route 66, actor George Maharis. Also today we have a special guest, and you'll hear more about him later in the show. And right now, here he is, man of the half hour, Skip B. Lowe. Ruta Lee. <laughs> My God, George Maharis, look at Ruta Lee's dog. Is that a beautiful Isn't dog? sweetheart, and her name is Miss Toby Wing. Is it? And um, they I... Want, they're wonderful with white potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you look, you know something, you both look wonderful, I must say. Well, you know, I don't think that we have aged five minutes, and let's face it, I mean, George you've been around here, Hollywood. Grew up long, here. A long time. And yeah, I keep okay. saying I look exactly the same. It just uh -huh. takes me a hell of a lot longer, that's uh -huh. all. Uh -huh. Ruta Lee. MGM. I got to get back to MGM first. Mm. MGM Studios. Mm -hmm. Messenger Girl. That's what no, that not quite. My very first job, and I went for the audition when I was, I guess, fifteen, and got the job in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. That was your first. My very first. With not Jane? my first job. My first job yeah. was on a Burns 15? and Allen show. Fifteen. Oh, wow. And there I was. Uh -huh. and by the time we finished, I was 16. I was an adult. <laughs> yeah, MGM, really. You were MGM. Yes, that, that's a great movie. MG it was the, the last of the really big So you must have had musicals. all those people on the set teaching you English. Exactly. Said, right. Exactly. I had to have a teacher. And You're then all of a sudden at 16, I, I didn't have to have it anymore, which really worked out 16? quite well. Yep. Uh huh. Tell me, those days were fun, weren't they? They were wonderful. And oh, my Lord, talk about learning. I mean, the best of uh -huh, Hollywood uh -huh. were in MGM, uh -huh, uh -huh. and I, I don't think then that I realized how wonderful the opportunities were, you know, and uh -huh. I, I almost wish I had them all over again because I don't know that I took advantage. Uh -huh. I was too young and too stupid to, uh -huh. you know, to figure it all out, but That's God was good. That's because we're being young, right? Yes. <laughs> George. Yes. yes. Mr. Peepers. Ah. Tell uh, me Mr. about Peepers. that. That was your first television appearance, wasn't it? Mr. Yeah, Peepers? Yeah, I think you're right, yeah. Wally Cox? Uh, Wally Cox. Love right. him. Yeah. Adore well, him. Wally Cox, I played his roommate in a flashback, and it came quite by accident. Uh -huh. you know? Tell yes. me about that. Well, I was just studying someplace, and they had hired somebody, and they didn't like them, and somebody said to somebody, uh, I know somebody who can play this part. That's the way I got it. Lee Strasberg? As a matter of fact, that's the way I got every part. Really? Yeah. I yes. never got a part from an audition yet. Really? You're kidding. But you know, come think of it, I don't know that I did, other than is, Seven Brides. Is that, the, is that the secret? Is that the secret? Well, no, I don't know if it's a secret. It's just the but way it happened with me. It happened. Tell me about Lee Strasberg. You studied with Lee. Yeah, I studied with Lee. I think Lee was uh, is a marvelous teacher. But uh -huh. he's he's one of those people that it's like it's like going into a restaurant and eating. You have to pick out those things that agree with you. I see. And you mm -hmm. don't you don't eat the mm -hmm. rest. And if you just go there to become a disciple, you're in trouble. Uh -huh. So what you try to do is you go to any teacher or any uh -huh. person and you pick what fits you. And in the finality, it's like it's it's like anything else. Uh -huh. It has to become your own. Right. Ruta, remember him in the zoo story? Do you remember oh, the zoo yes, story? Oh yes, of course. Oh, of one of my You're too young for that. No, oh, I am not. So don't admit <laughs> it. <laughs> George, tell me about the zoo story. That that was great. You yeah, got the an zoo Emmy? story. Yeah. You got an Emmy for that. And no, it was. Uh, there weren't any Emmys in those days. It wasn't. No, I it was. It, it was the theater world. A yes. theater world. Right. Yes. yes. It was oh, very much it wasn't so. Any, okay, you got an award. There were no Tonys. There and were no fact, Obies. What right. theater was it? It, it was, was the uh, Provincetown Playhouse, which is still there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I walked past it not too long ago, and they're playing something about uh, lesbian Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, ah. Oh, well, back right. to the zoo story. The zoo story <laughs> was Edward, Edward Albee's. Uh, Monique was, Van Voren yeah. starting it, or what? No, no, no. It was, uh, <laughs> oh, oh you mean not. the one that's going on now? No, the lesbian story, Dracula. Yes, no. I'm just saying. Because I had her show. on the show, uh, and she did a Dracula uh, for uh, Andy Warhol, a movie. She did yes. a, an, an, an mm -hmm. Andy Warhol movie. Well, he he. You mean no, wait a minute. What movie was that? I think did. I think it was uh, Andy, Andy Warhol. Yes, Frankenstein. It's, uh, yeah. Yes, it. she was in that. That's why I said it. Yeah, it but anyway, getting back to MGM days, you two Hollywood. You know, you did television here. You know, Route 66. Well, I never did it here. We did it on the road. We you didn't did. shoot it here. Yeah. You I didn't shoot any of it here. None of it. Well, maybe four or five shows. But really? Yeah, we pioneered the uh, the whole idea of taking a show on the road. Uh huh. So you went to every city. Well, we didn't go to all, yeah, we went to every city, but the interesting thing then was you could go 60 or 70 miles and you'd find a whole different cultural uh -huh. city. Yes, yes. And yes. now you go from country to country, it's all the same. Mm -hmm, uh -huh. mm -hmm. McDonald's and every, you know. Yeah. I, gr I grew up in television, and I'm sorry to say that one of the shows that I did not ever get a chance to do uh -huh. was Route 66. 
And maybe that's because you're You've on the done road all the time. Rita Lee has done, you really have done them all. I think you? that I have done over 2,000 different 2, television shows. shows. If you really stop and add them up, they add up rather well, I, quickly. That may know? be true about you, but that's all before my time. <laughs> Rita Lee, 2,000. At, at least, at least. 2001, you know, yes. Rita, I gotta, get, I gotta ask you this. Sure. Your grandmother, I mean, you oh. know, there's a thing about you. Washington, your yes. grandmother, yes. your brought her to this country. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, that's a long story. I'll try and, and make it very short. An awful lot of people, of course, everywhere I go, still stop and ask me, how's your grandmother? Because they were so tuned into all mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. And Americans well, yeah. who's, who's, who's are, are the most generous, wonderful people. Just a nice little I old lady from, from, from Lithuania right. who was deported along with my grandfather to Siberia. Right. And my, my grandfather died en route to Siberia. His, his legs were frozen on the cattle car that they were being <laughs> deported on. Uh -huh. She was dropped off in a snowbank. Another aunt of mine got a knock on the door in the middle of the night saying, pack whatever warm clothes and food you can carry for yourself and your children. They took the husband out in the woods. She heard bang, bang, mm -hmm. gunshots. That was it. That was the kind of existence. So I was the first one to become a citizen of these beautiful right. United States. Right. Uh, I was born in Canada. You were? Of Lithuanian uh -huh. parents. Uh -huh. yes. So I was the first one that could start making out Vizovs to uh -huh. get my uh -huh. grandmother out of Siberia. And you made a lot of noise. A lot of yeah. noise, but it took me 12 years to cut a long story short. Uh -huh. And finally, we got word she had been allowed to go back to Lithuania when they found each yes. other in Siberia eventually. And she was dying. We got word from an aunt who was taking care of her that she was now dying and she wanted to thank us for mm -hmm. the, the gifts we had sent that had sustained them, that yes, allowed them yes. to buy things, uh, wood for the roof, mm -hmm. that allowed them to buy a cow yes, that would yes. sustain them. And I got very distressed that my one remaining grandparent, and you know if you're of a European extraction you have very strong feelings yes, about yes, your roots. Yes. Yes. My one living grandparent was now going to be gone. I was never going to know her. Uh -huh. And I went out with friends that night, and the more wine they poured to console me, the more logical it became uh -huh. that I should forget trying to talk to the president and forget my congressman and forget trying to do Who things through the mail. Who was the president at that time? At that time, at that time would have been Kennedy. Kennedy? Was it Kennedy? Kennedy? Yeah. 60, 60 64. 61, 64. So I said, that's no, it. I no, it couldn't be. Kennedy yeah, was assassinated my, yes, before that. Yeah. He was assassinated in 62. Yeah, so 62? All right, so who's I think next? Johnson. 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 Okay. I had tried through okay. Kennedy and, okay. and had not accomplished okay, right. very much. Yeah. And so now I pick up the phone in the middle of the night when I figure it's business hours in uh -huh. the Kremlin, and I place a call <laughs> to the Kremlin. Who is there? <laughs> they, who was there? Everybody's there. Oh, uh -huh. Khrushchev. Khrushchev. Khrushchev, right. right. And so I place a call to Mr. Nikita Khrushchev, uh -huh. the Kremlin, uh -huh. right. Moscow, yes. USSR. And he said... And I will never forgive uh -huh. that bitch operator who said... Uh -huh. Ruda who? Spell that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, who the hell knows yes, where right. the H's and the C's right. and the K's are exactly. in Khrushchev? Uh -huh. And by then, I'm beginning to kind of sober up uh -huh. from the wine, and it's getting to be a, you know, a colder, <laughs> harder night. Right. So to cut a long story short, they yeah. keep saying, will you speak with so-and-so? And, -so? and uh -huh. I kept saying, nope, it's my nickel or my $500 for uh -huh. this call. I want to talk to Nikita Khrushchev. And did you? And you know what kind of a fruitcake they thought I was. And in the meantime, <laughs> as soon as the Russian embassy in Washington opened up, uh -huh which was, you know, 9 in the morning or 10, right. well, I started it. making <laughs> calls, right? Uh -huh. right? And they're still calling me back every half hour saying, you can't talk to Nikita Khrushchev. Right. And eventually they called me back and said, will you speak with Mr. Vodishov? And I remembered that Vodishov was that very attractive man that traveled with Khrushchev yes. and made Khrushchev's words palatable to our tender American ears, right? Uh -huh. And I said, yes, I will speak with Mr. Vodishov. Mm -hmm. And he said, Present yourself again to the Russian embassy, Miss Lee. I mean, we would love to have you travel, uh -huh. but it'll take, uh -huh. you know, yeah, th right. three weeks to get your papers ready. And I said, you don't understand, folks. My grandmother may be dead for all I know, and I would like to go to her funeral, and I would like to take my mother and father. Don't horse around with me. I want to go to the city where she is, not to where you have an in-tourist office. Yes, you yes. know, traveling in the Soviet Union is not easy. No. So anyway, I, within 24 hours, I was on my way and I took my mom and dad back for the first time in 35 years, and you can imagine what kind of a reunion oh, yes. that was. You really and then six months yes. later, I you went back you. to fetch her, uh -huh. and I brought her home to uh, America, where she had very, always very wanted to be. Nice. George, you are from Greek. Greece. Yeah. 
your parents here? No, no, no. My, I was born here. You were born here, but you were born, born in New York City. City. I was born in New York yeah, City. But my mother and father were, were born in Greece. They met in New York City. Uh -huh. Do they have a restaurant in New York? Uh, yeah, he the had Greek two restaurants. But yeah. He, yes. yeah, I figured that. Well, it wasn't that. a Greek Greeks. restaurant. It was, you know, Plus, American. American. They always Continental, have. right. Yeah, right. But he lost it in the Depression. So. Oh. My father was one of those people that got off the boat and said he wasn't going to get married until he had sufficient money to raise his children. He worked yeah. hard. He had three restaurants. He mm -hmm. married a woman. Had six children in a row. The Depression came. He lost it all. He could have got married when he got right off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> what made you get into acting, George Harris? Now tell me. What well, I'm one of those people who didn't, uh, I knew that I wanted to get out of where I was. And I where was, were you, George? I was in the slums. Mm -hmm. And I just figured that the best way to get out is, I wasn't educated, I couldn't speak, and I couldn't read, and I couldn't add. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't use any of those things. I yes. didn't go to college. So I said, what have you got? Mm -hmm. See? So I took my clothes off, looked in the mirror, and said, well, you can't sell that. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yes, you can. I know, you but can. not, not those days. <laughs> Nowadays you can. So I just <laughs> said, you know, and, and you go where it takes you. Yes. You know, and I just said I wanted to do something expressive, and I went into that area, and I started singing, and from there I went into acting, and That's then I went right. into you painting. Sing. Do you, That's do right. Do your brothers, your sisters no. perform? Yeah. Nobody no. does. It's strange, yeah. Michael Parks. My father's now 97. Your Ooh. father is 97? My mother's 80. How marvelous. Right. How marvelous. She's pregnant. <laughs> Any other hobbies? Uh, tell me yeah. something. <laughs> George, tell me something. Michael Parks. Yes. Faye Dunaway. Yes. She did a movie. She was in your first movie. She the Happening. With it, was the first movie. Yeah, it was her first movie. It was her first movie. Tell me about that. Michael Parks. Well, it's, it, was a, it was a picture with, with Tony Quinn and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Elliot Silverstein, Silverstein. Which one is it? I don't know. I never can remember. He Sam did, did that. Sam, he, uh, uh, who produced it? Uh, Sam... Uh, uh, no, 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 Sam, uh, um, uh, um, no, it wasn't yep. uh, I can't remember. He did Waterfront and yes, all yes, those, yes, yeah. um, Sam, Sam Spiegel. 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 Sam Spiegel, Sam Spiegel, right. thank you, they had Sam, and originally they had, they had, uh, 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 Bedford in the part that Michael Parts, right, Parts Michael. played, mm -hmm. I was in South America on concert tour, and they figured that, that uh, Brian Bedford was not, American enough, so uh -huh. they fired him, uh -huh. and they put Michael in that part. Tony Quinn had the same, you know, the, the whole mm -hmm. thing. So they moved everybody up, and then they called me in South America uh -huh. to play this part. And the picture was not bad, but they recut it, and there was a lot of problems on the picture. Tell me something. A lot Roots, of personality problems. Route 66. Yeah. You know, that was on for how many years? Three. Three. Is that that's, all? That's, yeah. It, it, seemed, gone, it yeah. seemed longer. Yeah. It seemed oh, longer. That, I did, too. Seven or eight. Tell no, me. It would have gone longer, except I got hepatitis and had to leave. Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. Yes, Tell I me something, George. You know. Did you enjoy doing that show? Oh, I loved it. Did you really? Oh, yeah. I understand they're going to bring it back. Is that true? Well, I they want to. They want to. They want to see whether it's it's apropos of what's going on today. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, in those days, what uh -huh. it was is two young people looking yeah. for their place in life. Mm -hmm. Now you've got two older people in a Corvette. True. You've got to be careful that you're not looking for a bunch of bums on the road. <laughs> true, 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 you know? true. So you got, you've got to bring it up. And, and from my standpoint of view, it uh -huh. works because we have a large segment of people in this country today, uh -huh. which is the first time that they're 40, and now that whole segment of their life is over. And now they're trying to reevaluate where they're going to go in the next 20 True. years. But you know something? I have a guest right now. Who's 40? 30 over, but his life is beginning to blossom like... Well, He's you over know, 40? It, it, yeah, he Are is. you telling me that Gypsy Boots is going to admit to being over 40? Gypsy Boots? No, it's not Gypsy Boots. His name is not Gypsy Boots. His the, name is plain right, Gypsy. But there used to be a fellow here called Gypsy, Gypsy Boots, Boots who used to make a candy bar. I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. candy bar has turned, this is the son of yeah. Gypsy Boots. Oh, well, I would like you, let's all bring out Gypsy, come Gypsy on. Boots. Gypsy Gypsy. There's the Boots. There's the Boots. There's the Boots. Hey. Shall we have lunch? Have your girl called Mike. Yeah, please, and all our girls. How are you? <laughs> and uh, how far over 40 did you say? Well, well we you we told the story once. You, you said, said you were so? 50... Uh, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> when you were house cleaning or something. I can't gypsy. Gonna, gypsy. Are you are having this? problems with that, Gypsy? Put it, I'm going to do put it in this. the button. He knows. There you go. He's That's done it a thousand times. That's Tell me, Gypsy. We got it. How's the sound I level? Mean, what's new in my key light? Where's my camera? Oh, what's new and exciting in Gypsy's uh, life now? Uh, everything. First of all, I'm vertical. That's the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get any more exciting than that. Okay. And uh, well, it is right now. Everything is just snowballing because, as you know, I'm the headliner at La Caja Fall right. on La Cienega and Lupe Siocos. Place has now just celebrated its 
fifth year in a town they said no, no way is it ever going to make it. That's right. That's oh, right. That's well, right. that's all Lou's that's doing. Right. Lou that's did it all. But how, right. how long is Lacage going on in France? That's been a long time. Well, that, that, that was a play. play. That, that was, a, was play. a play that ran for almost right. ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Right. Uh, the man who um, played the lead, Michel Serrault, was uh, in that play. Uh -huh. The fellow who played his lover was the producer of that play. When they finally oh. did the movie, yes. They found after it was a, a ran in Paris for nine years. As a matter of fact, one of the stars that we have in Le Cage Fall, who does um, um, the maid, isn't it? No, the maid? Yeah, yeah, Benny Lou, Benny Lou played the maid. Yeah. We have one of the stars of our show at Le Cage, who right. was in that play also. And uh, the uh, what happened was then the movies came out. Then Lou uh, Pasioko was in business in New York and wanted to bring it out here long before Alan Carr did the musical. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we came, he came out here, and they said, brother, it'll, it, you, you got 30 days and get out of town. We're now in our sixth year and packing them in. Mm -hmm. Great. And it's wonderful. And uh, myself, what was so wonderful about with Lou, we now have other restaurants that we own in town that have mm -hmm. snowballed from that. The right. Cafe L.A. Uh -huh. on Sunset and San that Vicente. Is that That's ours. And Love Lou's it. Has, Santa Monica. And Santa Monica is Lou Pasiocos, where they dine and dance now there. It's, yes. it's a beautiful romantic restaurant. Uh -huh. And another Cafe L.A. downtown at Figueroa Olympic. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. And we're opening more. And uh -huh. we have road companies of our show. We've been two years in Atlantic City at uh -huh. Bally's Hotel. Uh -huh. And we've just, we, I headlined and opened it at the Riviera Hotel uh -huh. in Vegas. And we're there now. I just finished a big uh, special with Milton Berle there that will be right. out in September. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so you've been... I'm Anybody? doing a movie with Jane Fonda and Jeff Bridges, directed by Sidney Lumet here in town, Jim, called The Morning After. God, you're busy. And uh, I have two more films, because Lou is producing. Mm -hmm. I have two more films this year, mm -hmm. and I'll be going on a soap opera this summer, supposedly. I haven't oh. signed yet, but supposedly. Uh -huh. Oh, that's great. Which you one, do you know? Uh, yes. No, don't really? say that. <laughs> but I can't Daytime say until I sign. Daytime soap? Yes. And you'll be working all day, and then go to the Lacage. At I Luke. certainly will, because I was no. out of work for too long, honey. Just Tell bring on why, work. Why? <laughs> what? I love what are you going to play in the soap opera? I will play yes. one of the lead ladies, her brother, that comes back and tries to straighten out her life with her children. Oh, I can see this now. And he's uh, straightening out somebody's life. <laughs> no, yes, 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 okay, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I've got to say, though, that, that in, yeah. in full sincerity, yeah. that this is probably... Gypsy, our darling Gypsy, right. is one of the most Sympathico outrageous, and wonderful people. The yeah. mouth to end yes, them all yes, yes. is the nicest the human being Sympathico. that God put on this that's earth. True. That's true. That's true. I, well, well, I, I want to tell you something. It is the, the millions of people that watch these shows. We do these interview shows, and they watch millions of people. They, it goes all over the world. And they don't realize there are people out there saying, geez, how do these people, oh, how do they get stuff? Everybody out there, anybody, I don't care if they're 100 years old. I was retired. I had a nightclub in New York called Gypsies on 58th and 1st. Jane Oliver got her start there and Nell Carter. Ooh. And, uh, and I story. didn't own it. Other people owned it and they used my name. And I, I didn't even do this kind of thing. It was sort of like crazy costumes. And then I always had a, a live act come up. Well, in 1977 when they closed it, I thought my life was over. I was hardly 40 then. But, was, <laughs> but we'll say it. I look 40. Yeah. Now. Yeah, <laughs> and and, and yeah. well, remember, I'm a grandfather too. And, uh, this is how it started. Yes. And I, I thought my life was over. I sold everything in New York. I had my little dog with me and kept two French chairs in case I needed some rent money out here. And came out and hung in with a close personal friend of mine. And I bumped into uh, uh, a friend of mine who said, well, you know, the best way to do it, Gypsy, if you're going to retire, get a job as a domestic servant. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? <laughs> so, I went, <laughs> so I went to the June Art Agency in Beverly Hills. And June Art. I do windows. No. Listen. June Art sent me, uh, said, well, I had one suit left because I'd blown all my money over those years, uh -huh. and who cares? And uh, believe me, Forest Lawn is full of some very expensive things, and none of them can eat steak tonight. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so if you've got a pretty chair, folks, sit in it now because somebody will right. get it tomorrow. And, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> imagine him as a domestic. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, wait. Well, so, well, right. so I never do anything level, in a level small the house. Way. Yes. So I was really quite depressed, but I had got my head psyched out, look, if I make a couple hundred dollars a week and I keep the job for five or six years, I can build up enough stuff to get some insurance money yes. and I can just retire nicely and just, I had a nice little studio apartment with my dog. So she said, well, the only job we have is uh, a cleaning man for a very, very famous gentleman and his wife. And uh, if you don't mind doing that, they, they need someone right away. 
On a rainy day, I walked up Tower Road and I got hired by Sidney Scheinberg, the vice president of an uh, executive officer now right. of uh, Universal Studios, MCA. So Lorraine Gary, his wife, uh -huh. was in Jaws. Right. They hired me as a cleaning man and I worked two years. Isn't that lovely? And I thought my life was just wonderful. The bus to the Beverly Hills Hotel uh -huh. and up the hill every day and down. And I'd wave at people like Jack Lemmon and, and uh, you know, uh -huh. and Michael Lin Lynn Land. And I'd say, hi, how's everybody? And they said, okay, and I was cleaning two years. I had Sunday and Mondays off. On a Monday that I was off, I was shopping at Ralph's Grocery Store, uh -huh. <laughs> and I bumped into a choreographer I knew in New York by mm -hmm. the name of Tony DeSantis. Sure. And that was uh, five years and uh, a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, I'm in town to direct and put together a new nightclub show called La Caja Fall. It was to open April 18th, uh -huh. five years ago. Uh -huh. And it was the big, high, it's a huge pink building, he said, but the the fellow that we have as the MC is the fellow who played the maid in the film, Benny Luke, mm -hmm. and he has film commitments and I don't think we can keep him. Could you come in and help us out? And I said, but I'm retired. I couldn't do any of that anymore. I'm mm -hmm. working for the Scheinbergs. I'm a cleaning man. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy. And <laughs> I couldn't do that anymore. I'm over the hill. I don't have anything. Right, right. So he said, oh, well, please try to help us. Well, let's see if we can do something. So opening night was April 18th. I got a call from Vivian Blaine, who's uh -huh. been a friend of mine for many right, years, right. and she got invitations to go to the opening. They were harder to get than, than anything in yeah. town at that, at that time for that one night, because everyone yes. wanted to see the place closed, mm -hmm. not open. Because we had Reverend yes, Falwell. They did. They oh, did. yes, Reverend yes, Falwell was picketing yeah. out front. Yeah, yeah. they did. Because, oh, yes, we had some great stories. My, my blessed rock cousin was wonderful. He did a great story on them. And uh, so we, uh, they asked me to go, and I said, I don't have a tuxedo. So they rented me a tuxedo. And I went because Connie Stevens didn't have a date that night, so we were all in the limousine together. I was out of the whole picture. Nobody knew who I was. Or I never was anybody, uh -huh, so uh -huh. I was that. Mm -hmm. So I sat there, and to make a long story short, they had a lounge there that was, uh, had just opened. Mm -hmm. So the owner of the club got together with uh, another fellow who worked there, Zaza, and uh, with uh, uh, Tony DeSantis, mm -hmm. and he offered me $400 a week to sit in the lounge and get dressed and do little things in the lounge. Well, P.S., I thought that's $600 a week. Uh -huh. So I asked Lorraine and Sid if I could keep my job. And they said, yes, so long as you come here every day on uh -huh. time, we don't care what you do at night. Well, that lasted seven weeks. I did both jobs. <laughs> but they came to my opening night. And before I knew it, in three days, I had replaced Benny Luke. And then three years Very ago, good. Marvin mm -hmm. Hamlish's sister was in the, mm -hmm. in the audience on Christmas Eve three years ago. Uh, Terry Liebling, who was the casting director for Mel Brooks and for To Be or Not To Be, be, or not to be. and I got the co-starring role with them, right. a, a, a complete stranger, all thing, and Anne Bancroft. You see, that's a, that's a real luck story. And, that is, yes, it, it is. It is luck. Is that Anne Bancroft that coached me for three weeks. But it's, it's one of those wonderful stories that if he told it 20 years ago, it probably could not have happened. I see. No. So in life, in the span of life, the way the, 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 the society was moving, right. he was right. Timing. Don't you think timing. it's timing, yeah. the right oh. timing? I think it's the fickle finger, too. It's well, I mean, it you don't know what fate's going to, oh, who true. knows. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. just so yeah. happened, it's it's just so happened, happened at the time. It come, he was remaking a masterpiece right. with his Academy <laughs> Award winning wife. Uh, one of the yeah, but if you had not gone to that supermarket. Super on if I hadn't That's gone right. to the supermarket, right. if I hadn't taken the job exactly. at St. Lorraine. It's timing. It's all timing. All leads, but we yeah. also have highs and lows all yes. through oh, yeah. life. And yes. especially yes. evident in our business because you can be so hot As for Richard several Nixon. years. He's yes, had some exactly. Too. Yeah, right. And then you're down. Yes, and that yes, doesn't yes. mean it's the end of your life. Oh, it just no. means you've picked this. But there are moments in your life when you're emotionally down and then your career goes down that you don't feel that way. That's true. Ruta, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Tell yes. me about Frank Sinatra. I hear, well, I heard What do you hear? Well, I heard some stories that you used to go out with him or no, something. No, not at all. I was Why? never that lucky. Really? I'm the only girl in this town that was he never Gypsy made that it. Was Gypsy that one out with him? Oh, no. Well, I Frank. No, I can tell you it wasn't that way. <laughs> no, I'll tell you. The story with Frank Sinatra and me is a real publicist dream. Uh -huh. I was with a group of people that went to see him perform when he was trying to keep Mary Morrison and, oh, wow. and the Macombo the alive. Macombo. Yes, Remember yes. when all the stars would Charlie, be yes, yes, Charlie yes, Morrison. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And I had never seen Frank Sinatra uh -huh. in performance. Mm -hmm. And so I went with a large group of people 
uh -huh. and sat at the front table and the uh -huh. place was so jammed and the stage was no bigger uh -huh. than this dais uh -huh. that we're on and I was sitting right under him watching him uh -huh. and of course he is captivating uh -huh. you know in, in a, with a nightclub audience yeah. yes, it's a, Works and well. sitting around further around the other side of the dais was a producer named Arthur Hornblow Jr. Uh -huh. And he really could only see the back side of Frank Sinatra, but boy, he got a good shot of me. Uh. And he watched me watch Frank Sinatra, uh -huh. and he sent a note over saying, would you have your escort bring you over to my table? Uh -huh. My name is Arthur Hornblow, Jr. I'd like to meet you. I see. Well, to make a long story short, I got the job in Witness for the Prosecution, uh -huh. playing Tyrone Power's secret girlfriend. Uh -huh. right. Of With, course, uh, Marlena Dietrich. Marlena yeah. Dietrich, right. And, right. Took, right. And, and of course, Charles, Charles Lawton, Lawton right. who, Wonderful. you know, walked on water. Right. 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 And, and the point was that Marlena Dietrich took one look at me with uh, the blonde, blonde hair yes. and said, Nick Nine, forget uh -huh. it, uh -huh. off uh -huh. it we comes, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Right. And I became an instant brunette. <laughs> <laughs> and fade out, fade in. Uh -huh. It's a couple of years later. Right. And Frank Sinatra is running witness for the prosecution at home, which uh -huh. he always does. I mean, not that movie, but he runs movies at home. Uh -huh. And Howard Koch was producing uh -huh. with him mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. And I, of course, yeah. worked for Howard, like we yeah, all me had. Too. Yeah. And they're watching the movie, and Frank says, you know, I've been watching that Ruta Lee on television a lot, uh -huh. and I think she's kind of interesting. Why don't we use her in one of our upcoming movies? And uh, Howard said, yeah. wouldn't I love to? I mean, I practically trained her in television. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so I got the job, and Frank Sinatra never knew until after I was working for him but that, was, that only yeah. because of him did yes. I get the job to start uh, with. That's the same. Which is kind of well, an interesting that's, story. That's, that's what see. happened to me with uh, Hollywood Wives. Jackie yes. Collins. Jackie Collins. Jackie Collins she recommended can. me to, no, before anybody. When uh, 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 Hollywood Wives? Yes, Holly, yes he was I in Hollywood Wives. Coco. Coco. He the was guy, wonderful. The, the beautician who owned the show yes. gave the girl her yeah. a job. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Aaron Spelling. Uh, sent a sheet to uh, Jackie Collins and recommended uh, mm -hmm. characters for these roles, and she recommended me, and then Howard Koch, and that's how I got that. Nice. George, what is new in your life coming now? Coming well, there's a picture coming up called Hollywood Husbands. And <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact. <laughs> Come on, George. What is, what is uh, anything coming up? You just got back from the... Uh, yeah, I no, I, I've, been do, I've been doing a lot, of, uh, a lot of stage work. We're waiting to see whether they're going to redo Route 66. Route 66. If, if, that, if that happens, yeah. we're going to be redoing it. Oh, I see. They, were gonna, they, they took it to CBS. CBS said that uh, the person who was there decided went okay. over to another network, uh -huh. and so Burt Leonard, who was the producer originally now, I see. wants to syndicate it. I he, see. It's like 80% uh -huh. go, so, and then they want to do 44 yeah. half hours. Great. Ruta you know. Lee. But uh, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> You'll never be finished. <laughs> not if we have anything to say about it. <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. Yeah. Ridley, what's coming for you? Ridley? Coming for me. Well, of course, I'm still on my uh, HBO uh, show, right, right. which is First and Ten, uh -huh, uh -huh. and guest starring, of course, on lots of different right, television right, things. Right. But I'm off to do uh, Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Perfect. Yes. Which I was so brilliant in yes. Atlantic yes. City Daddy. with JP. So, yeah.